What's up, conscious creators? Alex here, and in this episode, I'm gonna be sharing with you exactly how to feel good enough for someone, whether that be people you're dating, the person you're in a relationship with, or just simply for yourself. And by the end of this video, you'll know how to use the power of feeling good enough to relax and have more fun and become more attractive to your next life partner or your current partner and achieve more in life and create a more enjoyable life because of it. So stay tuned until the very end of the video because you're gonna wanna get all the information so you can apply it properly to get the positive results. But just a very quick announcement before we get straight into it. A few more slots have opened up for the free one-to-one -one with me to see if you'd be a good fit for the Consciousness Revolution program. So if that interests you, head over to speaktoalex.com or wait till the end of the video for more details. But with that being said, let's get straight into it. Now, one of the most common things that my clients tell me is that they don't feel good enough for their next relationship, for their partner, or to do a certain career change or launch a business. And it's a tragedy because this can needlessly hold people back from being more of their true self. And I know this because I've experienced it myself. So in this episode, we're gonna be looking at the core reason why you don't feel good enough and exactly what's happening in your consciousness because when you can see what's going on, it's gonna be much easier to break free. But first, let's have a look at exactly what's going on when you don't feel good enough. We have thoughts that arise in our mind from our subconscious and into our conscious awareness, right? And they are part of our past conditioning. The messages we heard from our parents, peers, TV, social media, and whatever else. And we interpreted that information based on messages we heard earlier and key decisions we made to protect ourselves to gain love or respect. And at times we don't feel good enough we are self-identifying with a thought or series of thoughts in the mind that compare us to someone else because that's the only way we can arrive at the concept of good enough or not. It depends on a mind-made image of us being compared to some other mind-made image of someone else or some archetype or some abstract idea of what we should apparently be like. And that generates these uncomfortable feelings of sadness, contraction, loneliness, isolation, and sometimes helplessness. You may feel doing certain things or dating certain people is pointless because you feel you just can't match this mental image of what you should apparently be like in order to be worthy of the prize. The other thing that's helpful to do is to be able to separate the factual and the rational from the egoic and personal. Because you have to investigate this really. When you don't feel good enough, good enough for who? Good enough for what? Because of course, in order to achieve a certain thing, like get a certain job or a certain position at a school or to succeed in a business or you know, you must have a certain level of skill or expertise, I get that. And that is something you will usually be able to learn, even if it's gonna take a while. Plenty of people have experienced being way off the mark in terms of skill or expertise that they need to have to do a certain thing and then eventually get there. I know I have myself. And there's the reality that like people tend to attract each other. You want to be in a relationship with someone who has a super athletic physique, but you don't work out every day of the week or most days of the week or aren't really interested in it. Well, that person is more likely to be attracted to someone that is. 
But again, that doesn't mean you can't change your habits and behaviors. It's called growth. I myself have, and I know I still potentially have an infinite amount of growth left to do, but that's okay. These are the facts of the situation. This is the expansion and contraction of life. The problem arises when these thoughts arise in your mind and you see yourself and believe yourself to be the sense of self in those thoughts. A sense of self that's feeling diminished by a comparison to the image of someone else. You judge your own qualities and characteristics and compare them to an idea of someone else and you come out on bottom. And that sense of self you believe yourself to be feels diminished and you suffer because of it. You may then project, project into visions of the future where there's some kind of bad consequences of you not being good enough. Maybe you get rejected. Maybe you don't make the grade. Maybe you'll be alone forever. And again, it's the identification to those thoughts and to those stories that generates the bad feeling and perpetuates the problem. So what's the solution? It's to realize that you are not your thoughts, but the awareness that they arise within. Go now to your experience. You have yourself, this spacious awareness, then you have thoughts that arise within your awareness. And it's often that sense of self in those thoughts and you believe yourself to be that self. But who are you really? The self in those thoughts or the one who's aware of them? Are you the thoughts or are you this awareness that they arise within? If you can realize, not by believing me, but from your own experience, that you are the awareness that your thoughts arise within, you will be on your way to breaking the cycle of not feeling good enough forever. You can disidentify from these limiting stories in your mind and instead know yourself as the spacious, formless awareness and not just this self-concept. Now, it is also good to change the self-concept. Yes, absolutely. Beliefs about yourself and what you're capable of are the vehicles that take you to new realities. And there are many ways of doing that. Reconciling the past, coming to new understandings, journaling, affirmations, self-celebrations and visualizations. But ultimately, if it's to be sustainable, it has to be built on a foundation of fundamentally knowing yourself deeper than the thoughts about yourself, even if the rest of society isn't there yet. Yes, many other people would tell you to essentially do things, to be able to think new things about yourself, to feel good enough. And I'm saying yes, Rewrite the thoughts where possible. Expose yourself to new messages and create new meanings and release emotion. But have the foundation of being able to transcend the thinking altogether and know yourself as more. Know yourself as the life and presence of this universe and not just the limited self-concept. Because it's a remembering. It's the remembering. It's spiritual awakening, waking up from the dream of thought and into presence. And every so often, you may get lost in thoughts again. I've been at this for years and I still catch myself momentarily doing it, momentarily getting lost in some idea of myself where I don't quite measure up against someone else and you can instantly feel this sludgy feeling that it creates. So forgive yourself and be patient with yourself. Realize you don't need it. It's not serving you anymore if it ever did. And it's just gonna make you play small 
when you're meant for bigger things. When your attention isn't constantly distracted by the image of yourself in your mind and you can stay present, you become instantly attractive anyway. You'll probably be the one person they go on a date with that isn't constantly talking to themselves in their head all the time anyway, or the one person that was present in that interview or that sales call and not just thinking all the time or wondering what to say next. You're able to see more clearly and rise to the challenges more effectively. And when you get lost in the mind again, you forgive yourself and you realize you're committed to truth. You're committed to a gradual unfolding away from the identification with thinking and into the presence. Because let me ask you this, does this awareness that you essentially are really need adding on to, to be enough? Is there anything that could be added onto you, awareness, or are you already complete and whole? When you stay as awareness, you go beyond the concept of good enough and you just are. No thought, no self-image for a moment. You can come back to that. Stay as the thoughtless, formless awareness and be knowingly that. And when disempowering thoughts arise in your awareness, allow them, accept them, but don't follow them. Don't identify with them. Just be the space that they arise within. Stay as who you truly are. This is your authentic self, not the disempowering mind made image. And this is where all of your natural confidence and creativity will arise from. And by the way, before you go, a few more slots have opened up for the free one-to-one -one with me to see if you'd be a good fit for the Consciousness Revolution program. On this program, I show you how to become truly present and know yourself as awareness so you can feel more peace with a new sense of freedom to take the right action, to create that dream life or dream relationship. Whatever it is for you, visit speaktoalex.com and fill in a few details about what problems you're experiencing and how you, what, what, what you want to overcome. <laughs> Can't even get my pitch right, can I? And uh, a bit about where you want to be. Then, you know, if I feel like I can help you, we'll have a chat about solving your problems. So that's speaktoalex.com. Like this video if you liked it. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any new videos helping you with conscious personal growth. Peace.